All right, so I uh, insulated this uh, saturated liquid line now, and uh, so I have very minimal influence from ambient temperature, and it's it's really not that warm here in uh, in the area I'm at. Uh, if we look up here, uh, right here's a thermometer sitting here, and uh, it's maybe 82 degrees or so. Um, these things are all over the place. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, you know, and I discharge an air from the condenser right against that wall. So it, it may be close to 78 in the shop in here. So it's not real hot. So we have a very minimal influence from these from these clamps. But let's take a look now at uh, at superheat. And what happened here was, boom. You know, we dropped a little bit off there. So you can see I'm going between 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Right. So we had like a degree and a half of superheat before. And now we've got that settled out a little bit further, a little bit closer to saturation temperature. So there's a very minimal influence from outdoor ambient temperature on those uh, on those on those clamp probes. You can see this thing is, is running right there. And the reason we're seeing that uh, subcooling come to zero is because we're literally falling into the point where there's no superheat, no subcooling, and it's right there. So it's it's within tenths of a degree, uh, within one tenth of a degree of being nailed on the saturation temperature. Um, our temperature probes again. Our clamps are within, you know, three tenths of a degree of each other. So well, we're really, really close right there. And uh, evaporation temp, measure temp, and nine tenths degree of superheat, zero degrees of subcooling. So the total uncertainty in this thing is less than one degree, right? Uh, and that that really nails the numbers. So when you ask him to be confident in the readings uh, of a digital instrument, the answer is uh, absolutely yes.